प्लीज गेट रेडी फॉर योग निद्रा प्लीज गेट रेडी फॉर योग निद्रा प्लीज गेट रेडी फॉर योग निद्रा यू आर लाइन फ्लैट नाउ यू आर गेटिंग रेडी फॉर योग निद्रा इट इज नॉट द प्रैक्टिस ऑफ कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इट इज नॉट द प्रैक्टिस ऑफ मेडिटेशन it is the practice in which you just listen and whatever you can do easily you do it otherwise leave it no tension of mind and no tension of body and you are now ready for your nidra do not sleep this is the only important point in yoga nidra you will have to try your level best that you do not lose your consciousness that you do not lose your contact with my instructions keep the contact with my instructions unbroken you should always be able to listen to me if you fall unconscious then it will not be possible for you to listen to me and therefore the most important instruction in yoga nidra is that do not sleep and you try your best that you keep on listening to me whatever you do not understand do not worry about it there may be certain instructions in yoga nidra which may be quite new to you but you should not worry too much on that keep on following my instructions because i will be moving very fast with my instructions i do not want that you should try hard to understand and miss the next instruction so you are now ready for yoga nidra you should now think in your mind I am going to practice yoga nidra this is the auto suggestion i am going to practice yoga nidra i am going to practice yoga nidra i am lying flat on my carpet and my body is still my legs are apart my arms are resting on the ground and my body is absolutely tranquil i am practicing yoga nidra i only try not to sleep and i will maintain my mental contact with your instructions whether i understand 
or do not understand because the sound itself is a force. After this preparation, you must now make a sankalpa, a resolve, a decision. Of course, not now in this Yogadra, because sankalpa is the seed, and the seed you sow, you reap. When the mind is tranquil, and when the mind is calm, then you make certain resolves. These resolves, the change of the course of your destiny, your life and your personality. And therefore, do not be in a hurry to make a sankalpa now and here. Do not make ordinary sankalpa. Do not make ordinary pledges. Do not make ordinary resolves. It is after self-inquiry and self-analysis for a long time that a man knows what he really wants. What do you want to be? What do you want to achieve? What you want to be and what you want to achieve, very few people know this. And therefore, at this point of Yognidra, before the practices begin, Sankalpa or a resolve has to be made. The resolve which you will make should be very simple, brief, concise, clear, And every day you must repeat the same resolve and the same language and with the same construction of sentence or words. Do not change it again and again. Anything in life can fail, but not sankalpa. A resolve made before Yognidra and the same resolve made at the end of Yognidra will never fail. Sooner or later, the resolve which you have made before the beginning of Yognidra and at the end of Yognidra will come to pass. Sankalpa is like a boon which you receive from a higher power and therefore do not ask for an ordinary thing. Do not ask for the trifle objects of the world. And so, as I have told you now, you will try to discover a sankalpa or a resolve. And in course of time, when you have made it, final decision about it, you will add this sankalpa at this point 
of Yogi Nidra, before Yogi Nidra. Now, the practices of Yogi Nidra. Listen to me, and whatever I say, repeat that mentally, do not speak. Say it mentally, and at the same time, think of that particular part of the body which I am indicating. Supposing I say right hand thumb, you will also say at the same time in your mind right hand thumb and become aware of the right hand thumb. Do not concentrate on the right hand thumb, just be aware. Do not concentrate on that particular part of the body, just be aware. Do not move that part of the body. Do not concentrate on that part of the body and do not speak it loudly. I will go fast and you should follow me with attention. Right hand thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, palm, wrist, elbow, shoulder, armpit, hip, waist, thigh, hamstring, kneecap, ankle, heel, sole of the right foot, big toe, second, third, fourth, fifth. Now go on to the left. Do not speak, do not move, just to say mentally and feel it. Left hand, thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, palm, wrist, elbow, shoulder, armpit, hip, waist, thigh, hamstring, kneecap, calf muscle, ankle, heel, sole of the left foot, big toe, second, third, fourth, fifth. Now go on the back side, back side of your head, right shoulder, left shoulder, right buttock, left buttock, the whole of your back, right hamstring, left hamstring, right calf muscle, left calf muscle, right heel, left heel. Now in the frontal part, Go from the top, forehead, right temple, left temple, right ear, left ear, right eye, left eye, eyebrow center, right nostril, left nostril, right cheek, left cheek, upper lip, lower lip, both lips together, chin, right collarbone, left collarbone, right side of the chest, left side of the chest, navel, right thigh, left thigh, right kneecap, left kneecap, right foot, 
left foot. The body becomes heavier and heavier and heavier. It becomes more heavy. Try to make your body heavy so that the contact point between the body and the floor can be experienced. Make your body mentally heavy. The head is heavy. The right arm is heavy. The left arm is becoming heavier. The back is heavy. The shoulders are heavy. The buttocks are heavy. The right thigh is heavy. The left thigh is heavy. And the calf muscles, right and left, right and left calf muscles are heavy. The heel, the heels, right heel and the left heel both are heavy. And gradually you are superimposing heaviness on your body from top to toe. You are imagining the idea of heaviness and imposing it on the body, superimposing it on the body from top to toe. The head becomes heavy, the right eyelids are heavy, the left eyelid is heavy, your lips are heavy, your right cheek is heavy, your left cheek is heavy, the whole head is heavy, your right shoulder is heavy, the left shoulder is heavy, the right arm is heavy, your right palm is heavy, your right arm is heavy, your left palm is heavy, your left arm is heavy, both arms are very heavy, heavier and heavier. The middle part of the body is heavy, the chest is heavy, the stomach is heavy, your groins are heavy, your thighs are heavy, your knee has become heavy, your legs have become heavy, and the whole body is become, has become heavier and impose this idea of heaviness with again and again and with this heavy body you experience the contact point between the whole body and the floor heaviness and then you feel that your body is becoming lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. And when you begin to feel that your body has become lighter, then also you can clearly visualize the contact point, the meeting point of the body and the floor, which is almost like a line from the top to toe. Now, starting with your head, the head is becoming very light, lighter, you know, how what is lightness? The heap of cotton is very light. Like a heap of cotton. Your head is like a heap of cotton. Everything is light. Eye, right eye, left eye, cheek, your lips, your face, your head is like a light cotton. The right chest, and the left chest, and the right shoulder, and the left shoulder, and the right arm, and the left arm, and the right palm, and the left palm. Everything is lighter, is stuffed with cotton, as if stuffed with cotton, as if it is stuffed with cotton. Your stomach is very light, your groins are very light, thighs are very light, your legs, your right leg and the left one, both legs are very light, 
the whole body is like a heap of cotton and you become lighter and lighter as if you can easily raise or you can easily lift or you can easily feel the separation of the body with the floor. As if you can feel the separation of the body from the floor, that much lightness you must be able to experience. Lightness is an experience of the mind. Lightness is symbolized by cotton. And experience or imagine if your whole body was built if your whole body was constituted with cotton, how light would you be that the body could be lifted, that the body could be raised above the ground and the floor and your body could be separated, the meeting points could be separated. Feel it once again first on the top of your head lightness. Imagine it is made out of cotton. Your right eye, your left eye, your right cheek, your left cheek, your both lips, your whole head is light, is made up of cotton and it is very light and then the right shoulder blade, same way, left shoulder, right shoulder, both shoulders and the whole back and the whole back and the right arm and the left arm and the right palm and the left palm the right buttock and the left buttock and both buttocks and the back together and your chest right and the left both stuffed with uh, light as the cotton your stomach and your groins your thighs right and left your legs right and left and your feet, both. Now imagine the whole body. Imagine you try to see the whole body from outside as I'm looking at your body. I can see your body. I can see your head. I can see your right hand. You can see your left hand. I can see your chest. I can see your stomach. I can see your thighs. I can see your kneecaps. I can see your legs. Everything I can see as you are lying on the floor exactly in the same way you must come out of your body and try to see the body from outside and feel that it is so light as if you can with one finger can raise it. Take your mind at the bottom of your spinal column. In between the excretory and urinary is the center, Muladhar Chakra, the perineum. In masculine body, in feminine body, it is inside the vagina at the root of the uterus in the cervix. And slightly higher up, at the root of the main spine is the Swadhisthan Chakra. And still higher up, behind the navel in the spine is Manipur Chakra. Still higher up, behind the heart in the spine is Anahat Chakra. Still higher up, behind the throat in the neck, is Vishuddhi Chakra and at the top just behind the mid eyebrow center is Agnya Chakra and still higher at the curve at the end of the curve of the brain is Bindu Chakra and at the further curve frontal curve in the center is Sahasrara Chakra. I will now cite a few names of objects, animals, 
flowers, etc. I will go with good speed. And you should try to practice dharana, awareness, concentration, or rather I would say visualization. But as fast as I go, do not take much time. If you are able to visualize, well and good. If you are not able to visualize, please move on. And I give you a signal, blue lotus, which means you are not sleeping. And those who are not sleeping, they will remember the signal, blue lotus. Uh, if you do not remember the signal, blue lotus, which I have cited three times, which means you have become unconscious. Red rose and a rose plant with a few roses blooming and the thorn of the rose and the crow flying high up in the sky beyond your rooftops, the clouds soaring in the sky, white clouds, gray clouds, black clouds, there are rain clouds which are soaring in the sky and you can see the dim disk of the sun behind those white clouds, the dim disk of the sun. Rising sun in the eastern horizon when it is beautifully red and when the sun rises the sky, the eastern horizon becomes colorful. Visualize that. And a moving river. A river is fastly flowing and a boat and you are the boat, rowing the boat fast. Moving river. And a dead man lying inside the coffin absolutely dead, wrapped with black robe, black piece of cloth, and the rose, red rose, and the plant of red rose with many roses in full bloom, and you can see a row of white birds flying very high in the sky. They are the migrating birds which fly from the north to south with a peculiar sound, quang, quang. And the long line of those birds high up in the sky, while the sky is blue, absolutely blue, clear blue, and the birds are flying. The dark night with the stars studded in the sky, the tiny little stars, twinkling stars in the dark night, and in the dark night you can hear the howling of a jackal from very far off, a dense forest a dense forest with tall trees and so tall and so dense and so damp and so dark that it is so beautiful and in between the forest at one particular point there is an opening there is the open ground and that open ground you have a small hut 
with a small heart which is thatched with grass and the heart is beautiful it is raised platform of about a meter and in front of that hut a yogi is sitting in yoga posture in buddha posture his body is naked his body is well built his body is shining it's a well built body he has growth of hair and beard his eyes are closed and he is sitting cross legged in front of him there is a pit in the pit the fire is burning and the fire is burning and the fire is burning and from the fire the smoke is emanating and the smoke is emanating and the smoke is rising high with the tall trees in the air as a beautiful scene a raised cottage a thatched hut a simple hut as you can imagine now and a yogi in cross leg buddha posture is sitting with grow beard and hairs with eyes closed in front of him there is a kunda or a pit and the fire is burning a beautiful fire quite nice and quite big and quite red and quite glowing are uh, quite uh, like golden color when the gold is in fire how does it look like with the with the tongues of fire with the flames of fire and the smoke is rising and in the atmosphere you can hear the humming the powerful humming of the sound om om the sound the sound of om humming and the river is flowing and the river is flowing and you are rowing a boat and you are flowing with the river very fast and the river goes further and further and further and mingles with the ocean the sea the expanse of sea the blue sea The waves are dashing against the shore. They are very powerful waves. And when they dash against the shore, they turn into foam. And then they go back again and go further with the sea. Go further, stretch your imagination as far as you can. Go far. and you see where the sea meets the sky hazy horizon and beautiful sea and the blue sea meeting the blue sky and the meeting point that is the horizon is very hazy and the horizon very hazy dark night with stars twinkling in the sky wait a minute the dark night every night you have an experience what it is like everything is quiet maybe some dogs barking maybe some jackals howling maybe some birds singing interval the nature is quiet you are the lonely person who is experiencing this dark night with twinkling stars studded with this canopy and in the eastern horizon the full moon is rising look the full moon is rising and how is the full moon 
How is it rising first? A partial disk, then on and on more and more. It's so beautiful. It is so beautiful the rising of the moon and the snow capped mountains like Alps, like North Pole, like Himalayas. Ranges after ranges, as if you are flying by an aeroplane. And through the windows of the aeroplane, you are looking down. Mountains, snow-capped mountains, absolute white. And as if a sheet of white, as a white sheet had been spread all over. The mountains are so mysterious. The mountains are so awe-inspiring and their height is so majestic. The mountains and you are flying over the mountains and you are flying through the clouds. It is so hot. You are in a hot country. It's so hot. It is so hot you feel the heat. It is so hot that you feel absolutely drained and your body is experiencing sweating, perspiration. What is heat? If you go to the Middle East countries, if you go to the African countries, if you go to certain parts of India, and it is heat. It's not cold, it is heat. And the body begins to perspire, and the body begins to sweat. And it is so cold, as if you are in the Arctic region. So cold, everything is cold. Body is contracted. And everywhere it is cold, the air is cold, the sun is cold, the atmosphere is cold, everything is cold, you are cold. Now, go into your physical body. Inside the physical body, in your head, in your brain, at the top, on the top, the forehead, is the frontal wall of the house. The right side of the head is the right side of the house, right side wall of the house. The left side of the head is the left side wall of the house. And the top of the head is the roof of the house. The back side of the head is the back wall of the house. It's a house. It has four walls. The front wall, the back side, the right side, and the left side. And the top is the roof. And it is a chamber. It is like this hall, like a room. And you are in between these four walls inside the brain, please. The forehead of the brain, the forehead is the frontal wall, the right side is the right wall, and the left side is the left wall, the back side is the back wall, and the top is the roof. And you are in it. And inside is a floor, a floor. And on that floor, in the center, there is a tiny lamp which is burning, a tiny lamp. But the tiny lamp, a tiny lamp, very small, the lamp is burning. You can see the tiny flame of the lamp. You are seeing the lamp and the flame. Now this is a house, look here, the frontal wall again, the right wall, the left wall, the back side of the wall, and the roof. When you are in the room, what do you see? You see six things, the floor and the roof, and the four walls, 
and you are inside that chamber, inside that highest chamber, inside that highest chamber, in that chamber in the center is a small lamp and the tiny flame. At the back side of the room is a small opening like a drain pipe. And look into that drain pipe. It is a drain pipe flowing down at the back of the house, at the back of the room, at the back side of the room, in the back side of the room is a small opening as you have in your bathroom. And there is a hole, there is a drain. The drain is flowing downward. When you look into the drain pipe, when you look into the pipe very carefully, it is so dark. The pipe is so dark, it's so dark, I like to go in. Now, if you take your consciousness, make it so minute, make it so subtle, and you go down into the dark, and you are getting down through that hole, down, down, and down, go in down, and down, and down. And where do you come out? In Muladhar Chakra. You are now going to make a Sankalpa. The same way as I told you in the beginning. Everything in life can fail, but not the Sankalpa which you make at the beginning, at the end of the Yoga Nidra. But that sankalpa should be decided after proper thinking. Because it is a boon which you are asking. It is a boon which you are cherishing. And definitely you will get it. At this point, you have to make a resolve, a sankalpa. Don't make an ordinary resolve. Make a resolve which is all comprehensive and which is absolute. Now become aware of the environment of this room where you are practicing your mudra. And I am Swami Satyananda instructing you Hari Om Tat Sat Hari Om Tatsat Hari Om Tatsat